Okay, so the next module is um, God responds. And so Jeremiah prays this prayer and asks God um, for the people what should be done, what they should do. And so now we'll look at what God says. And, and uh, so there's a bit of history that comes first here from Jeremiah 42, 7 through 9. And that says, now at the end of 10 days, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And we talked about this word of the Lord coming to Jeremiah. And, and it seemed to be that just suddenly he would have a message from God in his head, in his memory, and he would never forget it again. And, and so the word just popped into his, into his mind, and, and he knew what the message was he needed to give to these people. Verses continue on. Then he called for Yohanan, the son of Korea, and all the commanders of the forces that were with him, and for all the people, both small and great, and said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your petition before him. So the next question to consider here is why 10 days? Why did God wait that long? These people are running for their lives. They're afraid. And so 10 days would have seemed like eternity to them. And they're hoping for a quick answer. Why is God waiting 10 days? Did, did he need to think about it? Does he need to strategize and, and uh, say, well, if this happens, I should do this or this? So, or does he have to weigh a bunch of possibilities and figure it all out? What do you think? Why 10 days? <laughs> he's doing it for their benefit God always works that way he does these things for our benefit as well although we don't always see it as being for our benefit uh, if we're impatient then we're saying I wish God would hurry up <laughs> but, but patience is an important thing pastor was speaking about that in a sermon recently um, waiting on the Lord um, Waiting on the Lord is worshiping him. It's um, honoring him, uh, asking God a question, then getting impatient and doing whatever you want instead of waiting for God is not what God wants. So the delay is actually to benefit the people. Um, if, if they can wait on God, and we know that's their struggle, um, that gives them, in that 10 days, gives them an opportunity to settle down and to think and to pray and, and to look at all of what's happened, why Jerusalem was destroyed, all those sorts of things. So it, it is an opportunity for them to, to settle down and, and not make this trip to Egypt, because ultimately that's what God's going to say they shouldn't do, um, and, and to think about things. But if they don't wait on God and, and they are in, impatient, um, they're going to just run around in fear and they're going to try to protect themselves and they're going to pack up to go to Egypt and they're going to do a bunch of things like that instead. And so it's an opportunity for them uh, themselves to prepare um, and, and to prepare to, to return to God is really what God is looking for. So he wants to see them um, take the time to think about what's happened and, and to uh, turn back to him. That's always God's goal. So, continue on. This is um, God's message through Jeremiah. If you will indeed stay in this land, then I will build you up and not tear you down, and I will plant you and not uproot you. For I will relent concerning the calamity that I have inflicted on you. Relent means to stop. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, whom you are now fearing. Do not be afraid of him, declares the Lord. For I am with you to save you and deliver you from his hand. I will also show you compassion, so that he will have compassion on you, and restore you to your own soil. So that's a wonderful promise. God says, if you stay here, this is just going to be great. I'll make sure that the king of Babylon treats you well, and you'll have a wonderful lives, and everything will be great. And, and um, why, why would they ever think, well, no, we, we can't accept that promise. Um, and, and so that's very much in line with God's name and his character. Remember, we talked about that recently. It, uh, from Exodus 26, it says, uh, he shows loving kindness to thousands, to those who love me and uh, keep my commandments. But then the next part of that is, I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. So there's, a, there's that duality to God. I, I show loving kindness to those who love me and keep my commandments, but I visit iniquity on the people who hate me. And we're going to see that in action here. So in the first part of that message from God coming through Jeremiah, he gave them this wonderful promise of stay in, in Israel and I'll make sure that everything works out wonderfully for you. You have no reason to fear anything. You'll be safe. Everything will be good. Um, and, but now he continues on. He says, but if you're going to say, we will not stay in this land so as not to listen to the voice of the Lord your God saying, no, but we will go to the land of Egypt where we will not see war or hear the sound of a trumpet or hunger for bread and we will and stay there. Then in that case, listen to the word of the, law, of the Lord, O remnant of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, if you really set your mind to enter Egypt and go in to reside there, 
Then the sword which you are afraid of will overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine about which you are anxious will follow closely after you there in Egypt, and you will die there. So all the men who set their mind to go to Egypt to reside there will die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence, and they will have no survivors or refugees from the calamity I'm going to bring on them. So he's given them two choices to make here. Um, if, if you stay in, in Israel, I'll make sure everything is good for you, um, but if you, uh, and that's what I want you to do, but if you don't do what I tell you to do, you're going to go down to Egypt and it's going to be a total disaster for you. You're going to be wiped out and you'll never return to uh, Israel. And so God continues on with this. He says, for, the, for thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and wrath have been poured out on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so my wrath will be poured out on you when you enter Egypt, and you will become a curse, an object of horror, an imprecation, and a reproach and you will see this place no more. So God is really clear about this. Um, he says, you saw how I destroyed Jerusalem, uh, and that will be you if you go to Egypt. Uh, it, everything is going to go bad for you if you go to Egypt, but I want you to stay in Israel, and I will take care of you. So God offers them two things, a wonderful promise and a serious threat. And you would think that would be an easy choice to make. Um, and so... Uh, what is God trying to do here? So, to me, it sounds kind of like a warning, like beware. Uh, yeah. But what's what's his goal? What does he want from the people? Obedience. <laughs> yeah, obedience. He wants them to choose what he tells them they should choose. And so that has been their problem throughout all of this. That's why Jerusalem was destroyed. That's why everything was, is that they wouldn't obey God in anything. It's like an example. The Lord's giving them the answers already, but they still yeah. write the wrong answer down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's, he's given, exactly. He's given them a choice. And, and what should be an easy choice? This is not a difficult question to answer. And, and, and so, um, yeah, things will be great if you do this. Um, all you have to do is trust me. There's that little trust issue there. <laughs> and, 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 and if you trust me, then you will obey me and you'll do what I, I tell you to do. And that little word, if. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so there's a choice being made here. And, and this uh, blessings and curses is something that comes up elsewhere in the Bible. Can you think of a place where God offers people a choice between blessings and curses? Uh, there's another place in the Bible where God offers the people a choice between a bunch of blessings that he says and a bunch of curses. Do you remember that? What comes to mind is when they were in the wilderness wandering. I was just reading a little bit of God, and I know our, our God is very loving, but at the same time, there's one curse is really bad. It said you lead up your children, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that is too strong. <laughs> so it's. It talks about different things, and I go, wow, this yeah. yeah, but it's, it's always a choice that God gives us, um, yeah. and, and, and that's key here. And so, there, there, yes, you're right. There was another time, just as they're going into Israel, Moses tells them about two mountains that he's going to have them go up onto, and, and one of these is Mount Ebal. I think I have that down here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Um, this is from Deuteronomy. It shall come about when the Lord your God brings you into the land where you are entering to possess it, that you shall place the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. So these are two mountains that are going to be inside the borders of Israel. And, and half the people are going to go up on this mountain and they're going to recite all of these, or, or they're going to hear the, the priest recite all of these blessings. And then they're going to go up onto uh, the other mountain and they're going to hear all of these curses. And so, and, and God is again making that exact same choice or putting that choice before them. If, if you do what I tell you to do, everything will be wonderful. But if you don't do that, everything will be a mess of curses. And, and in the text of Deuteronomy, he, he lists all that out. And the blessings are about like this, and the curses are about like this. <laughs> so there's three times as many curses listed as blessings. So again, you'd think, easy question, uh, who could get the answer wrong? They do. So um, this is from a Jewish site that describes that event. It says, six tribes were to stand on Mount Gerizim, and the six remaining tribes on Mount Ebal. As the Levites called out a series of blessings and curses, the tribes on the mountains answered, Amen, after each statement. We are told that Gerizim was fertile and lush with greenery, and Ebal was a barren, bleak rock. 
So they're on these two mountains. And so God has done this as a big example for them, saying, okay, um, these are the curses I'm, I'm offering. These are, uh, these are the blessings I'm offering. Um, you choose, on, and you choose by how you live, whether you live uh, the way I want you to live or you live the way the outside nations uh, live. So that, that choice is the same thing as the choice that's being offered to them again here. And, and so it really, when they offer this, uh, when God offers this choice through Jeremiah to these people, this remnant of Israel that's left over, he, he, he hearkens back to that same choice that they were given when they went into the land of Israel. And so it's kind of a reminder of, of what happened. Uh, and, and again, that's the choice where they made the wrong choice. And, and that's why Israel has been destroyed, why Jerusalem is a wreck. And all of these things have happened because they chose to go against God and they got all the curses that God had promised them the first time if, if they chose wrong. Any thoughts or, or ideas? What the, you know the meaning of each mountain? What does that mean? Curse, curse, amen. I, I did look that up and I didn't see anything really significant about that. But you'd think there would be, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd, you'd expect that. Okay, so that's the end of uh, the modules for today. And next week we'll pick up with the rest of the story and on more modules. But it's it's interesting, I think, that God has given them such an easy choice. You'd think that would be an easy choice. But we know that they, they struggled with that when Drew, when Israel first went into uh, Judea and, and the land of Israel, promised land, and they made the wrong choice there over and over again. Any more questions or thoughts or anything? Well, something came to mind. Like you were saying that one of the mountains was beautiful and lush. <clears throat> And the other one was like barren and all. It, it came to mind when Lot was separated from Abraham and he, he chose a very fertile land. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then it became bad for Lot, didn't it? That's, yes, it didn't go well. So, but some, <laughs> yeah. but the grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> Green. Yeah, it, in this case, God says, here's how you get the green grass. And, and if you don't do that, then you get the rock, the hard rock. Mm 